Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just broke down the crazy trade that took place almost exactly 24 hours ago, actually, between the Bulls and the Thunder, where the Bulls sent Alex Caruso, two-time All-Defensive player, uh, to the Thunder in exchange for Josh Giddy straight up. I don't know what they're doing. I don't think anybody really knows what they're doing. I think that's a ridiculous trade to make there in that situation, especially with where you are at in your competition cycle. That's not going to help you get any better as far as draft picks go, and that is not going to help you get any better right now either. So, uh, but in this segment, we're going to move off of that, talk a little bit about the Lakers. They hired a new head coach finally. They cut it real close, a little too close for my liking, too close to the draft, too close to the beginning of the offseason, but they finally get a deal done with J.J. Redick, 15-year NBA veteran, first-time coach at any level. Uh, We'll talk about what that means for them, what what he has to do to, to succeed, and if he has any chance of succeeding or not. So we'll talk about that in just a second, but before we do, remember... That if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Appreciate all of you guys for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to talk a little bit about the Lakers hiring J.J. Redick here. J.J. Redick, officially the next Lakers head coach, takes over after the Lakers fire Darvin Ham. They're losing in the first round, uh, this time to the Denver Nuggets, two years in a row of being eliminated by the Denver Nuggets. Not really anything to be too crazy about because it's the Nuggets with Jokic, and they're very good. But uh, the the Lakers move on. They hire J.J. Redick after a long, drawn-out process to hire a head coach, one that had t- uh, twists and turns, had multiple guys being front runners, multiple play, multiple coaches, high-profile coaches uh, in the running, including Dan Hurley, who rejected them. They were giving him an offer that would have made him one of the highest paid coaches in the league. Not really their usual style, but uh, they did send an offer to Dan Hurley there, which he rejected. And now they hire J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick, who is a 15-year NBA vet, very smart player. Uh, had, a, had a great career, uh, hosts a podcast with LeBron, and that's really what's being focused on here and really is, I think, a big reason why he got this job. And I know, you know, it's not just because it's with LeBron. Uh, his podcast is a very numbers-oriented X's and O's podcast. He shows he knows the game. Everybody knows he knows the game. He's great in the media, being able to explain the game of basketball, uh, how they draw plays, how it's supposed to work what the theory is behind it. So he clearly knows his game. He's got a high basketball IQ and also LeBron likes him. And right now the Lakers are playing the LeBron game Uh, with LeBron. He also hasn't, you know, said he's going to opt into his player option yet, which would keep him in LA for another season. I'd be shocked if he didn't. Now, part of me wonders if He's waiting until after the draft to opt in because he doesn't have to opt in until after the draft. He's waiting to see where Bronny goes because Bronny is going to be in this draft. Uh, the draft is just five days from now on Wednesday, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about the NBA draft next week uh, as it comes up. It's a little too close for my liking to hire a head coach now, and I know we kind of we kind of went over that just just a little bit here. Uh, when we were talking about Monty Williams being fired, how close it is to the draft. I think coaches and draft picks are some are getting to know the draft pick, agreeing with the GM on how they're going to fit into your system is something that's super important. And uh, this, this feels like a move that is just like, Hey, we know who we're going to have. We know uh, the kind of the general idea and they have a couple days to figure it out. 
but not being there for pre-draft workouts, not being there to discuss what kind of player that the coach thinks they need, not being there to have any input on the whole pre-draft process that they've had, which is all but over at this point. You know, five days until the draft, there's only so much that they can do uh, hiring J.J. Redick that late, that late, but... The bigger issue for J.J. Redick is going to be how he's able to handle the locker room, right? He's going from basically being a peer of these players to having to get them to listen. And in good times when they're winning, I'm sure that won't be an issue, honestly. Uh, winning, it's easy to control. But this Lakers team, there's no guarantee that they're winning. They're winning. They haven't been higher than a 7 seed. Uh, they've only been higher than a 7 seed once in the last 12 years, right? This is a Lakers squad that hasn't consistently been winners. They've missed the playoffs a lot recently. This is this is not a squad that's super built up for success. They're very top heavy. Anthony Davis, LeBron James, the top of that, uh the top of that heap as far as star power goes is powering them to the playoffs every year, but as we saw last season they weren't able to get out of the first round once they run into the Nuggets and they did go on to a run uh 2 seasons ago all the way to the Western Conference Easy. All the way to the Western Conference Finals. But, you know, it's not really a situation that is built for long-term success. And the locker room can obviously, just like everybody else, know that J.J. Redick was the second option. They wanted Dan Hurley. They offered him that contract. Uh, and now J.J. Redick comes in. He's tight with LeBron. And they they together have to win over that locker room, right? And I'm curious how much say LeBron James is going to have, right? Obviously, he's a lot of sway. They have a personal relationship. And I wonder how that's going to go if there are any disagreements between the two. Is LeBron James going to respect his decision as a coach if he disagrees with him? Now, I'm sure LeBron James, you know, I'm sure LeBron James is all all gung-ho about bringing his friend in to be a head coach. But, you know, there's there's situations where he as a player is going to disagree with something that J.J. Redick, the coach, is drawing up. And he's not going to be able, if unless he wants to split that locker room and have them not trust the coach, to fight him that hard, to really say, hey, you're wrong, I'm the one that brought you here. It's an interesting power dynamic here. Uh, and, you know, we don't, obviously, he's he didn't, actually bring him there. There's a lot of other factors. LeBron James says he's staying out of the coaching search, and I think a lot of this is because uh, Rob Palenka and the Lakers want to keep him in LA, in LA regardless of what, what happens with Bronny James, because there's no guarantee that the Lakers are the team that's going to end up drafting Bronny James here. There's a lot of things that could happen, and he and LeBron James has constantly said he wants to play with his son. He wants to, you know, he might he might opt out of that contract, and if he does, or if he doesn't, and Bronny James is on that team, is JJ Redick going to be able to make those coaching decisions to be a successful head coach? Like I said, I think he's a smart basketball guy. I think he has best great basketball IQ, and I think in theory he knows what's best for the team, right? But in execution, uh, having the guys actually trust him, having the ability to control the locker room when stuff is not going great. When stuff is going great, I have all the faith in the world that J.J. Redick will be an elite NBA head coach with his ability to control the locker room, right? But I'm worried about how it's going to go when they go on a little bit of a losing streak, when they get into an argument, when not everything is kumbaya in the locker room and the coach has to step up and make it better, right? especially if it's with LeBron James and someone else. I don't know what it's going to be like if there's going to be a disagreement with LeBron James. Are the players going to not respect him as much as they would a different coach because they see LeBron James not respecting their coach? LeBron James has a lot of pull here, and I know that's kind of what this conversation is, and I think J.J. Redick has the opportunity, has the ability to be a great NBA head coach. But since it is his first time coaching, and since he has that close of relationship, he has a podcast with LeBron James, it's a weird little power dynamic there that he now has all, he's the superior, right? In, in the power, in the power level, or, or I guess the, the decision-making level here, he is higher than LeBron James and the rest of that team. But in basketball, more than any sport, the players have a lot of say in this, right? And I just... 
I am a little worried about his ability to control that locker room, his ability to keep the team together when there are disagreements, especially if LeBron James is against him, because I don't know whose side these players are going to take. A, a coach who, who in all honesty, is going to be the scapegoat if anything goes wrong there. First-time head coach, they're kind of setting him up for failure. He's either going to be great or he's going to be gone in a year or two. They give him that four-year deal, but there's it's a, it's a lower contract, and they're willing to cut coaches loose, clearly. Excuse me. It also just isn't a great situation for the future. It's going to be fine for a year or two as long as you have LeBron, but LeBron's going to retire soon, and that team has no cap space. That team has no depth. It has no assets. They've gone all in. It's going to be interesting to see what J.J. Redick is going to do with the Lakers. I think he has the ability to be a great coach, but there's a lot of factors that go into being a great head coach other than just having the knowledge of the game. So we'll see what happens, but anyway. In the next segment, we're going to finish up our NBA conversation. We're going to talk about two players that signed max contract extensions with their team, Malik Monk and Pascal Siakam. Uh, Pascal Siakam signed his a little while ago, but we are going to talk about both of them and what they mean to their teams as the as as uh, the Pacers made it to the Eastern Conference Finals and the Kings had a tough-fought season filled with injuries. What Malik Monk, the runner-up, the six-man runner-up of the year, uh, means to that team. So stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 